It's been one of our top stories, the Supreme Court's historic decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. For more information on the legalities of the ruling, we're joined by Alexis Cara Tracy, an attorney in the Public Policy Office at the Archdiocese of New York. Alexis, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. So happy to be here. So before Roe v. Wade, in 1973, the states determined the legality of abortion. And it, even after the 1973 ruling, it was never a constitutional right, but yet so many people still call it a constitutional right. Why is that? What's going on? Well, I think it comes back to the law is a teacher and Roe taught the wrong lesson in the sense that Roe considered abortion to be a constitutional right. And that kind of got into the psyche of society to people, people but now all of a sudden started believing that abortion really was a constitutional right. And I think, you know, over the past 50 years, it's kind of just been taken for granted mm. until now, until the Dobbs decision, which essentially said that no, Roe was incorrect and that the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion either implicitly or explicitly. Yeah, Justice Alito said it wasn't even in the Constitution. Constitution. The word is not in the Constitution. Exactly. So now again, it's up to the states. And uh, so it goes to New York. And in New York State, you know, they're trying to do anything to keep abortion legal. So what do we do now to change that? Well, of course, I think it's a battle over changing hearts, changing minds, mm -hmm. changing the culture. But I also think it's important to expose how radical the abortion law is in New York. So, for example, the Reproductive Health Act, you know, abortion is essentially legal through 24 weeks of pregnancy. And even afterwards, yeah. if, you know, if needed for some sort of ambiguous definition of health which is not necessarily to, you know, to save the life of, of the mother, but for any other such health-associated re reason. Mm -hmm. So I think if people really understood, even pro-choice people, how radical the abortion law is in New York, mm -hmm. they would start to have some second thoughts. Wow, interesting. And there's been a lot of misinformation since this ruling. Some women are worried that, you know, hey, what if I have an ectopic pregnancy? What if I have a miscarriage? Are the medical professionals allowed to help me? Can you clear that up for us? Sure. Well, that's a common now misconception, I think, as Catholics. But as people in general in America, we should be very careful to sort out misinformation. Mm -hmm. Now, and I think the church is actually helpful in this because the church really specifies what's a direct abortion. If you look at the catechism section, 2271, yes, <laughs> I'm a nerd that knows all of that. That's okay, that's it talks job. about a direct abortion. It talks about an act that intentionally, directly ends the life of an unborn child. Right. Whereas a miscarriage is something completely different. In the case of a miscarriage, which is, again, very sad, yeah. terrible, terrible situation, the child, unfortunately, has already passed away. Right. Now, if we look at the Texas law, people don't always know this, the Texas abortion law, they actually define what abortion is, but then they list a series of carve-outs, and they specifically say, you know, a, any type of act to remove an unborn child due to a miscarriage is not an abortion, so right. obviously it would not be illegal. And then right. similarly, with an ectopic pregnancy, which again is another very, very sad situation where, you know, a pregnancy is essentially outside of, mm -hmm. you know, the uterus, and in that case, a child may pass away, mm -hmm. but it's not a direct act, it's not an abortion. But of course, there are people that, you know, say, well, oh my gosh, now all these medical procedures aren't going to be allowed, this is terrible for women, and that's just not the case. Good, so they don't have to worry about that. One really quick Mm -hmm. um, a lot of pro-abortion people say it's a benefit, that abortion is a benefit, it's a need. Does society need to change here? <laughs> yes, I think, well, I think society needs to change, but I think also there needs to be more of an understanding of women's health, women's fertility, the ability to have a child as something good, mm -hmm. as something positive. You know, a pregnancy, a child, is not a disease. That's something good that needs to be embraced. And I think, unfortunately, we have a paradigm in society where it's, okay, mother against child, or mm -hmm. if you have a child, you can't excel in your career, right. you can't, you know, succeed. And that's just unfortunate and totally not true. Absolutely so true. Alexis Carrot. Tracy, an attorney with the Archdiocese of New York. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti, anchor of Currents News. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button on this video. And if you want to see more content just like it, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching because we are putting your faith in the news.